recommend to our listeners is an excellent book that came out at the end of 2018 called These Truths. Um, there's a Harvard uh, historian, Jill Lepore, who's from Worcester originally. She's from Central Mass, and she wrote it. It's by no means a comprehensive history of the United States. However, when she is talking about um, the phenomenon that most defined, say, the 1920s to now, because the book goes right up to the present date with the Trump administration, um, she, you know, uh, and I happen to subscribe to this general idea that one, one of the worst one of the most powerful, certainly, and defining things to happen to um, to uh, uh, politics in America, but um, uh, the, perhaps the most damaging is the the formation of the modern polling state and modern marketing, because it was at least a generation or two old by then, you know, post Civil War era to the 1920s, where you have a, a 50, 60 year period of, you know, this modern Madison Avenue marketing apparatus that comes to the fore. Uh, it profoundly changes um, politics. And then, of course, by the 1950s, with the use of, um, you know, computers from IBM and whatnot to predict, to, um, and then what happens is, is human beings, of course, take this information. To, you, you cite a good example. I happen to agree with that. You can put out a poll and you can say, this poll said X. Um, you're not giving all of the poll parameters, and of course, you're also not giving all the parameters to the answers. Right. And you're also not giving conditions, and you're not giving, uh, you know, what uh, what sort of controlled environment you did it in. So, without knowing the entirety of the process of the poll, it really doesn't tell you anything. Exactly. But but it means everything. It means everything. It tell you everything, you know. It and, means and, everything. And so, yeah, about that being a very damaging. Uh, aspect of modern American politics. It's just it's 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 it's, it's pernicious. I, I believe it's it just doesn't it just doesn't it doesn't educate the voter at all. It, it it's it's actually the opposite of educating. It, it's it's just it, it, I don't care which side you're on. Most polls are biased. It depends on the question. Even I mean this this wars over over the wording of various ballot questions. The way you the way you word something can mean all the difference in the world as to how it comes out, as far as the result. Well, we we've got to pick that apart in a future episode. Yeah, because that that's become a real problem. Right? I mean, it, it, it resulting in basically very vague, vague um, <laughs> misleading descriptions that you know you're like, well, I, I so you might know what you want to vote for, what you want the end result to be. But the language of the of the uh, of the ballot d d might not necessarily reflect the, the, what you want. <laughs> exactly, a, a lot of people, a lot of people, even intelligent people, I'm talking, will read a ballot question and vote yes, thinking that they're actually voting in favor of something, and, and it's they're actually it's the opposite of what they wanted. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what happens when you get lawyers involved with you know verbiage and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know if it's the lawyers getting involved. I think it's just. I don't know. I think it's the politicians getting involved. <laughs> well, listen, this has been a great uh, this has been a great first episode. I'm I'm happy we're doing this. This is going to be fun. Yeah, it's it's going to be good. So we'll we'll work out the kinks as we go. That's right. That's right. We're we're developing the show as we go on because there's so much good local and national uh, fodder for uh, doing these episodes uh, here at the Scots on the Rocks Politica podcast and you know he's been quiet all night i'm gonna ask uh for our producer to give a shout out those of you who may listen to our uh sister podcast the are we here yet podcast dedicated to economic development and cultural phenomenon cam mcleod hello hello i've been here the entire time like a how you doing over there i now i bet you coming from new hampshire you you must you know uh where where i have to say having owned a business there for five years uh, you know, it, what you don't realize just how political New Hampshire is until you're there every day. Uh, and it's still, like it's more in your face it's, it's, uh, than it is here. But as you can see, it's, it gets pretty interesting here too, depending on where you live. Well, it's very interesting for me, just a quick end of the podcast anecdote on my part. It's interesting to see the uh, – because as you guys were talking, you have majority Democrat – it's the opposite here in New Hampshire. Like we have Republican uh, governor. I think it's majority Republican state reps, things like that. So it's just it's interesting to see the different 
the differences in that, even just that small regard and hearing all the different little points and prods and everything. So when some of the some of the operational challenges are the same because they're because of the phenomenon of the one party state. Right, right. Exactly. It's I'm excited to be producing and listening to this, so you know, I can't wait to hear what you guys got going on forward. Yeah, thanks for doing it. Yeah, of course, of course. It's great. So we're coming back at you, ladies and gentlemen, every week. Uh, we uh, try to take a specific uh, phenomenon or small number of political phenomenon, and then we uh, talk about them uh, through the lens of both the national arena and the local arena. Um, this has been Scott M. Graves talking to you. And, and I'm Scott J. Graves. You know, for years I told people – when they said, wait, there's two Scott and I, and I didn't know you then. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it. I used to say to them, well, I'm the younger, better looking Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I was SG for a long time, and then I can't be SG anymore. So I could be SJG. I actually had someone at one point tell me, you know, the best thing for you to do since you're not originally from here is you need to change your name. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And, you didn't, though. And, and you didn't do that, huh? I, well, I, I was like, this This is the most eg existential of existential problems. I can't be Scott Graves. I mean, I've always been Scott Graves. How the hell can I be anything other than Scott Graves? It's a metaphysical question. It's, it, it gets right to the heart of the matter, doesn't it? It does. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the right. Scott's Fox Political Podcast, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Tune in next week. Good night. Good night. <laughs>